Good morning. Make sure everyone has a full cup of coffee and that you're ready to go. Uh, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for coming this morning. I am so excited that this day is finally here. I've been really looking forward to bringing together so many folks who are dedicated to really studying and learning and supporting fathers and families. So thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Cynthia Osborne. I have the privilege to direct the Child and Family Research Partnership here at the University of Texas at Austin and um, at the LBJ School of Public Affairs. And we're just thrilled that so many of you came out today. Uh, we have two broad goals in bringing you together. And one is that we all come on to get on the same page of our understanding of what is going on in the world of research and uh, service uh, for fathers. And the other is that you guys get to see that there are so many other people in this state and across the country, there's folks from all over, that are really dedicated and committed to this field as well. And I hope that you make connections with them and leave here knowing that what you're trying to do and the challenges that you have are probably shared by others and that you have an opportunity to really support one another. So uh, we hope that that's what you walk away with today. I wanted to start with a couple of thank yous uh, because that's really important because this would not have happened without um, the commitment and support of so many. And then I wanted to take care of a few housekeeping things um, and then we can kind of get it all started. But I wanted to begin by thanking Sasha Roscoe, who, uh, as most of you know, is the um, director of the Prevention and Early Intervention Program with our state's Department of Family and Protective Services. That was pretty good, right? <laughs> Me being able to memorize that title, it's taken a little while. Uh, but, but she really is the visionary behind this. Um, her agency is funding this and um, uh, she's going to share with you all her um, reasons and visions for why this is occurring. But I really wanted to thank her and to thank her staff. Um, Michael Hussey is back over there, and he's kind of the grandfather watching over all of this. But he really was the one who helped to shepherd it through, and I really appreciate um, the, that work that he did. I'd also like to take a second to really thank the staff of the AT&T Center. Um, we have incredible uh, AV staff. We had folks who were here before Don setting it all up, who cooked our food and who will be helping us throughout the day. So um, please take a moment when you see them to thank them for all of their help in this. Uh, I also want to thank my team. I have an incredible, incredible uh, research team full of folks who work with me full time, for students who work with us from uh, a few hours a week up to it seems like full time, I'm sure for them too. But we are so blessed to have them. Uh, so if all of the staff from the Child and Family Research Partnership could just stand up and be recognized for the work that you guys have done. But like with any team, there are some folks who really carry the water on um, certain projects. And to make this conference happen, uh, we had some folks who worked double time. And uh, the person for whom you will probably never understand the work that she actually put into it, um, you would only understand if she hadn't put the work into it, um, is Wendy Gonzalez. So thank you, Wendy, for all of your work. <laughs> And then also to my fatherhood team, um, they are the ones who also helped to create this vision and to coordinate it all and are also responsible for so many of the materials that um, are on your table and on the resource table in the back. Um, so if they could stand and be recognized, please. Um, so Daniel, uh, Jen, Ali, Isabel, and Andrew. Um, I think I got you all. Uh, thank you. So much. <laughs> Okay, well, I think I have thanked everyone, and I apologize if I haven't, but um, a, a couple of housekeeping things to uh, remember. This is the thing about getting old. If I put these on, 
I can't see you, but if I don't wear them, I can't see this. So, well, it's okay. Um, you're still there. Anyway, <laughs> it's important to um, remember a couple of things. First of all, we're being videotaped, so you need to be on your best behavior. <laughs> Make sure uh, to, uh, you know, it, your grandma will see this. Um, <laughs> Also, most of you probably saw a registration that there was a parking pass provided for you. If you did drive and you need a parking pass, uh, please pick one up uh, at the registration table um, and they'll be available throughout the day and particularly when you're leaving this um, afternoon. There's also, like I mentioned, uh, a resource table over there that has all of the materials that the Child and Family Research Partnership has put together over the past uh, several years kind of in the space of fatherhood, I welcome you to uh, go to our website at childandfamilyresearch.org, but we also have a flash drive for you when you leave that has all the materials from the conference, including all the uh, slideshow presentations. So we want you to walk away with as many resources as you can possibly have, and we welcome you to share them uh, others with us that we can share with others. Throughout the day, we're going to um, have some trivia and prizes to give out, so stick around and make sure you come back after breaks. And uh, tonight, we have a reception at five o'clock downstairs from here to network and to get to know each other and to celebrate um, the time that we had together today. So um, I, at, at church, after the preacher gives all the announcements, then he says, now let's rise and greet each other with the peace of Christ. We don't have to do that, but I do want you to take an opportunity and to make sure that you really are here and everyone, that you understand how important it is that you're here. I don't any, want anyone to sit at a table and to be a stranger. So could you just take a second and introduce yourselves at your table and the person sitting kind of around you. Um, if you don't, if you're not meeting anyone new by doing that, turn around and meet someone new. Um, so just take one second and I'm gonna ask Sasha to come up and share. <laughs> I'm already behind, I'm sure, but oh, no, no, that's that's fine. make my piece brief. See, I think they're telling me. Oh, your lob's not on. What's that? Your lob's not on. I did turn it on. Yeah, yeah, it's off right now. All right, it's on now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Okay, well, now my mic is really on. <laughs> I knew that it was going to be hard to get you all to come back. And I especially wanted to keep an eye on Kenneth Thompson for not having to make the whole rounds of the room. <laughs> it will, he, will have no, he will know everyone here. Um, I'd like to have Sasha take a second and share her vision for today. Um, again, please uh, join me in thanking Sasha for uh, pulling us all together here. Well, is this on? Can you guys hear? No, it's not on. You know how to do that? I think they can control it from the back. I think you have it now. Okay. Good morning. Um, I, Cynthia did such a beautiful job queuing up today. I think there's, there's so much excitement in the room, even at breakfast, um, and it, it's a little bit of a reunion of sorts uh, um, for so many colleagues, and we've all been in work groups together, those of us here at the state, and I don't want to steal any of the thunder from the state panel and the practitioner panel. We have some really exciting things happening in Texas, and part of the purpose of today was for everyone to hear about it. Um, but I, I will just give a, a little bit of a context of how we got here. Um, we are in, having a, a wonderful time um, in the world of child abuse prevention and child and family strengthening services. Our budget has doubled, we, um, and we are merging with our Texas home visiting colleagues. So this year alone, we'll have almost $100 million invested in community-based child and family services programs, mm -hmm. um, whether they're home visiting, whether they're crisis counseling, whether they're youth mentoring, and whether, including our very focused fatherhood work, which you will hear quite a bit about today, but uh, we know that beyond that, we wanna inform all of our child and family services to be, be father-friendly and um, 
and it's just such a, a, a huge opportunity for investment, for making kids whole and thriving. So, so this is, we're just so thankful to have this partnership with Cynthia. Um, and I, I just want to also mention that beyond the services that we impact, one of the other reasons that this, you know, this brainstorm happened, partly because we had some federal funding that um, we really uh, wanted to maximize, and this seemed like the, a great opportunity. But we were also talking to our other colleagues, um, which you'll hear from today at the Attorney General's office and at the State Health Department, um, and, and fathers and men were coming up over and over and over again. And in particular, I just want to talk about one set of data matching work we did with the Department, the State Department of Health Services, where we took um, a, a cohort of, of children who had been killed by abuse and neglect and matched both their data and their parents' data against birth and death records. And, di and the health department did some epidemiological work um, on what were indicators that m might, or what, what could we derive from some indicators of risk um, in hindsight. And a as I'm sure is not a surprise to anyone in this room, not having um, a father listed on the birth certificate was one of the highest risk indicators. Um, and so through that work, we were just, doing more and more with the health department and, and using that public health approach, which we know is the answer to all of our prevention strategies. And that's how we became connected, I think, again, with, uh, I see Matt from the WIC office, um, <laughs> with, um, you know, all the many ways that we can get further and further upstream and change norms and reach fathers and, and, and impact parenting and impact kids. So this has been kind of a lot, a big multidimensional mm -hmm. kind of cross-agency, cross sector um, uh, lead up to today. So we're just thrilled and I will turn it back over to Cynthia to queue up our keynote. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sasha. Really, I'm really glad that you've had this um, commitment. <laughs> so I have the uh, privilege of introducing one of uh, my favorite people and um, one of my mentors, uh, there really is not another person um, in this field who has been more influential in helping us to understand uh, what the needs are, what the capacities are, and what the services need to be for um, our fathers, and particularly our more vulnerable um, and lower income fathers. Uh, Ron Mincy is a distinguished professor of social policy and social work practice at Columbia, but uh, he has a, a long history um, in this field. I think uh, most of you in this field uh, know that we didn't, we didn't come out of the gates all believing that we needed to support fathers or that fathers even mattered. It took us a long while to get there. And um, you know, when I was kind of coming up, I remember in the 80s and 90s that there was um, uh, I'm going to stylize the facts here a little bit, but there were kind of four different groups that uh, were really kind of making a, a, a inroads into this field. And one was the Promise Keepers, and that was more a, kind of a religiously led group that said that dads need to kind of go back and take the central place in their home. Kind of made feminists a little uncomfortable, but, uh, but they, were, they were a loud and uh, um, ambitious group. There's another group that we kind of lovingly call the Mad Dads group. Some of them, uh, who, that maybe we weren't as loving as we needed to be. But they really did change the way that the courts had to start thinking about uh, how fathers were treated, um, especially in the event of divorce um, in terms of parenting time, and um, that not to think of dads only as a provider. There was also another group, and none of these are mutually exclusive, that really started to focus on father involvement, father accountability, and what we would call responsible fatherhood. This group played a huge role um, in welfare reform in both um, trying to bring back the idea that uh, marriage was an important piece to uh, the equation and that child support needed to really get in there and be more active in trying to hold dads accountable. And out of some of that rhetoric came this notion that a lot of our dads were dead beat. There was a little voice kind of off in the corner, you know, one of those that kind of start off slow and starting to grow, that was saying, I'm not sure that this dead beat idea is really the right way to be thinking about this. 
And it was a small group of, of men and women who were trying to kind of shine the light on the idea that there was actually this group of dead broke dads out there that actually wanted to participate and be involved and in fact were involved in their children's lives in ways that we weren't measuring. And Ron Mincy was really one of the most vocal leaders in that. Um, and he didn't, just have, he didn't just kind of start to say this. He at the time or soon after um, started to, uh, was a senior program officer at the Ford Foundation and actually funded the most influential study uh, of fathers and families to date. Um, and that was at the time I was just uh, uh, starting school and I was lucky enough to be involved with that project and uh, his leadership and that of Sarah McClanahan and Irv Garfinkels who were co-PIs really launched the career of lots of scholars who are interested and um, able to study fathers and also helped us to truly understand what the capacities of our fathers are in these low-income families. Uh, it just can't be stated, uh, uh, overstated of how important this work has been. So I'm so thankful that Ron is actually here with us today to share more of, of his thinking. It continues to evolve and surprise us sometimes. We never know what he's going to say. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, please join me in welcoming Dr. Ron Mincy.